Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Stay with the breath all the way in, all the way out. Tell yourself you're going to learn to be, become friends with your breath. Be on good terms with the breath. So notice what it needs. If you're going to be friends with somebody, you have to listen to their needs. So what kind of breathing would feel good right now? And deep breathing? Try that for a while, see how that feels. Deep breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can try to something not quite so deep. Faster, slower, longer, shorter, heavier, lighter. All kinds of different ways that you can play with the breath. And as you play with your friend, you begin to learn where your friend's strengths are and where you can depend on the breath and where you can't depend on the breath. In other words, the things that the breath automatically does and the things where you have to help it along. And when you help it along, though, you find that you have a new ally inside. And this is really important because, as the Buddha said, we have to learn how to depend on ourselves. As we start out life, we depend on our parents, we depend on our, our siblings. But as we get older, we find that we have to get more and more self-reliant. And so you need to develop your inner strengths and have friends inside that you can depend on, that can help you along. So that when unpleasant things happen from outside, if difficult things happen from outside, you've got your inner strengths with which to deal. So you can deal with these things so you don't feel totally exposed, totally weak. Because what, what happens often, say anger comes up in the mind because something that someone else has said or has done. And then the breath gets strange, and that means the breath has suddenly become a friend with your anger and not a friend of yours. So the next time anger comes up, remind yourself you can still breathe in a calm, relaxed way, a, a way that feels nourishing and refreshing. And that way you've got the breath on your side. And the more people you have on your side inside, the more you can really depend on yourself, rely on yourself. Because when the Buddha says we have to rely on ourselves, it's not automatically the case that we can rely. We have to train ourselves to be reliable. And so you have to learn how to not make your happiness depend on what other people do or say. If they say something, remember, it's just a sound coming in your ears. You can't let that be a source of your happiness. There's a story they tell of a monk staying with a John Cha who one morning he was in a foul mood because someone else said something, and that evening, that right after that, a John Cha said something really nice to him, and his mood went way up. And that night as he was massaging a John Cha's feet, a John Cha used the other foot and kicked him in the chest and said, don't let your heart do depend on other people's words. In other words, don't let, when the words are nice, don't make your heart go up. When they're bad, don't make your heart go down. Try to keep your heart on an even keel. And how do you do that? Well, you've got to have friends inside, and this is why we work with the breath. So we have more allies inside as we're dealing with greed, aversion, and delusion, and dealing with all the difficult things that come from outside as well. Because the problems are both outside and inside. The inside ones are the really big ones. So you need as many inside ally allies as you can find. So work with the breath here. Make it comfortable. Spread that sense of comfort throughout the body. And see how long you can maintain that, even after you get up from here and go walking around. That way you find you have a friend that goes with you wherever you go, and then you can draw on the strength of that friend whenever you need it. And this is how we learn how to rely on ourselves, by be becoming friends with all our good qualities inside. So they become our allies. keep us strong.